Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship at Redmond Presbyterian Church. I'm Jared Chase, your Children's and Youth Director, and I hope that you're all doing well this week. Now, we, before we begin our worship today, I wanted to share a few quick announcements. And first of all, I know that by now, many of you may have received my message saying that my time at RPC is coming to an end. And I wanted to take this moment to say thank you to all of you for everything that you've done for me. You've given me so many opportunities to grow, but most importantly, you've given me the opportunity to experience your friendship and to better understand what it means to be a part of God's family. I will always remember my time at RPC with feelings of gratitude and feelings of praise. And for me, saying this virtual goodbye during this time of social distancing, it feels incomplete. And so I want to make sure to let you know that I'll still be around I hope that we will still see each other from time to time, whether it's running into each other at the grocery store or at a restaurant, or perhaps we may even find ourselves worshiping alongside each other again one day. And in addition, Austin and I would like to invite you to join us for our Zoom Fellowship Hour after worship today. We have set up a Zoom call so that you can connect with us wherever you are. You can find the Zoom connection link on our church website or in our weekly email that is sent out every Tuesday. Also on our church website, you'll find some links to hymns. So anytime you feel the desire to worship or to connect with the larger body of Christ through music, these hymns are available so that you can enjoy them at any time throughout the week. And our last announcement is an invitation to share your prayers and concerns with us. Because even though we aren't meeting together in the same building, we still want to continue caring for one another in whatever ways that we can. If you have prayers or concerns, please email them to Pastor Austin or to your deacon. And if you have physical or financial needs, please also send these so that we can know how to best support each other during this time. Now, friends, let us prepare our hearts and our minds to encounter God's love and God's leading as we enter into this time of worship. Please pray with me. We are your church, O oh God we come together to worship. You have given us your word. We come together to learn from you. You have filled us with your power. We go out to bring others to encounter you. You have called us into your family. We come together to share our lives. You have put words on our lips, and we go out to tell the world about your love. You have given us your spirit, and we come together to celebrate. And you have showered us with your riches. And we go out to share your goodness with others. You have freed us from our past. And we come together to move forward. You have planned for us a glorious future. And we go out to live our lives to please you. We are your church. And we come together to worship. Amen. Let us join together in worship as we sing of God's goodness.
Because nothing on earth is as beautiful as you Open my eyes to your wonders and do Capture my heart with this love Because nothing on earth is as beautiful as you God together as we bring our prayers of confession uh, before the God who loves us and welcomes us uh, with grace and forgiveness. In scripture, Christ tells us to bring our burdens to him and and when we do so, we will find rest. And so together, uh, as we confess, let us bring our burdens before God and receive uh, the love of Christ uh, in this time. Please pray with me. God of justice, in baptism you anoint us to live boldly in the reality of your coming kingdom. We confess that we have not fulfilled our calling. 
We have not used your power to serve our neighbors. We have walked away from oppression and injustice. We've turned our backs on your beloved children who hunger and thirst in a world of plenty. And so, Lord, we ask, forgive us. Make us courageous servants of your justice, peace, and wholeness in Jesus' name. In the silence of this space, we ask, Lord, that you would hear our confessions and that you would heal our lives. Sisters and brothers, receive and hear the good news of Jesus Christ, that you and I are loved, forgiven, and made new. And so receive this forgiveness and live into the new life that Christ has made for you and for me. Because of Christ Jesus, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, friends, at this point in the service, we have uh, something a little special, something new that we're going to start this week and hopefully continue. Um, and what, what we're going to call this is uh, moments where we have seen God at work, or where do you see uh, God at work in your lives? We're all, as we know, uh, at home, um, in our own spaces, in our own neighborhoods, and, and because of that disruption and, and the inability for us uh, to meet uh, in the church sanctuary, one of the small gifts of this time, and, and I don't mean to suggest that, that this moment is, is a gift, but, but one of the, the things uh, that is a gift to us is that we can begin to witness God at work uh, in different spaces than we're used to, to looking for that. Uh, not just at church or not just in, in specific designated areas, but around the dinner table uh, and in the front yard and in our neighborhoods. And so uh, I'm inviting all of us to be alert and to pay attention to those places where we see God at work. Uh, but this week in particular, I've uh, invited Julianne Phillips uh, to join the conversation with me. And so I, I have a, a video, Julianne, and I had the opportunity to speak earlier this week and uh, want to share that with you now. Well, hello, everybody. Here we are. I'm here with uh, Julianne Phillips. Uh, thanks for, for being with me. Um, and, and like I was just mentioning to Julianne before we pressed record, um, in, in the midst of this uh, quarantine stay-at-home time, we're all experiencing... Um, a disruption, new rhythms and habits to our days, whether that means working from home or, um, or something altogether different. And I think our challenge, kind of what we're doing with this part of our worship service is to explore where are we seeing God uh, in the midst of our lives? Because we're not all able to gather on a Sunday morning in the same room, uh, but we're, we're, we're guided by the conviction that, that God is still at work uh, throughout throughout our lives, throughout our neighborhoods and our communities. Uh, and so I wanted to uh, chat with you, Julianne, because you had shared a story with me that I thought was a, was a wonderful example. You recently uh, had a slight change in one of your rhythms or habits. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, sure. So um, I'm working from home and my workspace um, is in a room where the window overlooks the street. And we're kind of a through street, so we get a lot of traffic on this street. And as I was watching people walk up and down the street, um, I thought, oh, what if I was out in the front yard instead of out in the backyard where most of us spend our time? Yeah. Um, and, and honestly, um, my front yard gets much better afternoon sun. So when I'm done working, that's a much, more, um, a much better place to be. So uh, one day last week, I, w I went to the backyard and I brought one of my red deck chairs and I put it on my front porch. And now I'm trying to um, pretty intentionally spend some time sitting on the front porch, which initially got some very strange looks from my <laughs> neighbors and the people walking up and down the street. But now people walk by and wave at me. So um, oh, I'm seeing a lot more of yeah. who's in the neighborhood. I like it, and I like that word uh, intentionally. Like you're, you're. So you you move the chair from the backyard to the front. Uh, is and that's where you're sitting right now, right? And I'm sitting here right now. Yep. Okay, what can can you show us your view on a yep. from your red chair? Awesome. Okay, so you sit out there and you see people walk by, and and you've said people are. It's a beautiful view, by the way. 
and yeah. uh, people are now noticing you and, and waving. And, um, and so uh, not to put too much weight on it and say, okay, so, so tell me all the uh, epiphany moments you've had or the sky parting and God speaking to you, but, but maybe, you know, as, as you've seen this different uh, way of seeing, as you've begun to notice the people in your neighborhood or maybe the people passing through, uh, what glimpse has that given you about uh, what God might be doing right now in the midst of this crazy time, uh, you know, uh, in the lives of the people walking by your house? Um, so we live in a neighborhood with um, a homeowner's association. And one of the rules is that you're not supposed to leave your garage door open and you're huh. not supposed to have cars in your driveway. And um, so ever, I mean, we've lived here for 30 some years and it's always been a little difficult to kind of figure out who's home and mm. who lives over there. And um, so I think I've noticed that um, people are not abiding by those rules right now. A lot more people have their garage doors open. Um, and, um, and I, like yesterday, a woman walked by and she, she knew me from somewhere else and she saw me out here on my front porch and she waved and called my name and um, I kind of walked into the driveway and we had a conversation. So I guess it, um, it feels friendlier to me. Yeah. Um, and, um, and I hope, and I, I'm hopeful that after we go back to having our garage doors closed and our cars parked inside, um, that perhaps we will still find ways to, um, maintain some of this contact and, um, know who it is that lives across the street and down the street from us yeah absolutely i love that just that that beginning of of the softening of kind of that that mm -hmm. community and, and that ability to connect that's great well thank you for moving your chair and thank you for thank sharing you. this story with us and just this uh small but i think profound glimpse of uh of what god's doing in our midst in, in this time thank you so much okay thank you austin Thank you, Julianne, uh, for that conversation. And, and again, I want to invite uh, anyone and, and everyone to continue uh, looking at uh, our world today with those lenses of where do we see God at work, whether that's our front yard or uh, in, our, in our homes or in our neighborhoods. Uh, God is at work, and, uh, and, and we are invited to, to pay close attention to that. And so um, I look forward to talking with more of you about, about just that. So this morning, uh, we continue our sermon series by looking at Acts chapter 2, verses 37 through 47. Uh, this is our second week in our new sermon series that we're calling Deep Roots, where we're paying attention to uh, the early church and uh, our long history of following God uh, in times like this, of unexpected change, uh, knowing that God is faithful and leading us forward. We are asking very similar questions today today to the ones that the disciples were asking here in, in the early parts of, of the book of Acts. What does it look like uh, to, to, to shape our lives in new ways? Uh, ours is, of course, brought on, our questions are brought on by this uh, pandemic moment. Uh, that's not the case in Acts, but nevertheless, similar questions of, okay, what do we do now? What is Christ inviting us into now in this uh, kind of situation. And so we pay attention along with the disciples in this moment uh, uh, to hear what it is that God has for us. Today we pick up in Acts chapter 2, and if you're following along, you'll notice we skipped a, a pretty important part of the, the passage in chapter 2, which is Pentecost, where the Holy Spirit arrives and empowers the disciples to speak in a variety of languages to the people uh, all around them. We'll come back to that passage. Don't worry. We'll get we'll, uh, when Pentecost Sunday comes in June. We'll come back to that. But for now, uh, I want us to look at the second half of this passage and the response of the crowd and the people uh, to the good news of the gospel. And, and in the same way, invite us into considering our response uh, to God's transformative power uh, in our lives and in our world. So let's listen together for God's word for you and for me from Acts chapter two. Now when they heard this, the crowd, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, 
for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute their proceeds, uh, proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day they spent as much time together in the temple. They broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Loving God, we do thank you for your holy word and uh, the ways that in it we encounter your love and your forgiveness, your uh, encouragement and comfort, your correction and your guiding. Be with us now as we hear your words and consider what they mean for us this day. It is in your name that we pray together. Amen. If you'll permit me for just a moment, I have a, a cheesy pastor joke that maybe you've heard uh, before about a guy stranded on a desert island. And he's stuck there for several years. And finally, after quite a while, a, a search party, a rescue party shows up uh, and is there to save him. And when they get there, they see that the, the man in his time, his years on the island, has built three buildings. And they're, they're pretty impressed at his resourcefulness. And they say, wow, you, what are these three buildings that you've built? And the man says, well, that one over there is my house. That's where I live and sleep and, and, uh, and, and eat every day. And they said, and, and what about that next one? He said, oh, that's, that's my church. That's where I go to worship God every single week. And they say, wow, that's just incredible. But what about that third building over there? And he says, oh, that's, that's the church I used to go to. But I, I, I can't hear you all laughing at home, but I'll just assume that there's incredible laughter going on right now. Uh, like I said, cheesy pastor joke, but um, the, the humor in this is about this search, of course, for the perfect church which many of us uh, know a little something about. We know that this is an unending uh, search, right? And when we read in uh, Acts chapter 2 about this early church community, um, we begin to, to, to consider for a second uh, that perhaps we found it, right? The bells start ringing and, and everything starts going off and we think this is the perfect church. Right? This is what the perfect church is supposed to look like. Everybody worships together, shares their possessions in common, eats together, cares for the community together, has the goodwill of everyone uh, in the community. Um, they pray together. It, it, it just seems perfect. And now with our modern sensibilities, with our kind of um, uh, ability to, to get things done, Oftentimes when we encounter this passage and we read it in that way, we can immediately jump into action and say, well, let's recreate the perfect church. We've got the blueprint. We have the ingredients. Let's just make it happen. Let's start a meal program. Let's uh, you know, have a worship schedule that, that everyone's involved with and, and on and on and on. If we could just make the perfect church. But I think we know that this is, is slightly a, a flawed process, right? Here's the problem with the, perfect, the pursuit of the perfect church. We never get there, right? We're not perfect. And we always have moments uh, where we say the wrong thing, where we hurt each other's feelings or ignore the needs of those around us at times. And, and sadly, but truthfully, this is normal, right? This is who we are. Uh, as, as imperfect people uh, doing our best. But if we set out to build the perfect church, if, if that's our expectation, if that's where we set the bar, then when we encounter moments like this, moments of frustration or disappointment, they will be perceived as complete and utter failures, right? The church is not perfect, therefore it's, it's completely wrong. 
And the bookshelves uh, that, that, that I peruse and the blogs that I read and the podcasts that I listen to are littered with people, young and old, uh, who have walked away from the church when they have found it to be imperfect. Right? The church let them down, whether it's individuals or as an institution, it, it wasn't perfect. And so they went elsewhere. And there are obviously examples where that's uh, the healthy move. But oftentimes when, when we set ourselves up looking for perfection, we find ourselves to be uh, disappointed. And so I think this is why it's helpful uh, for us to, to look at Acts chapter 2 and to proclaim right away that this passage is not meant to be a picture of the perfect church. This is not the bar that you and I are supposed to set for ourselves and, and try, to, try to live up to or jump over. Uh, that's not what's happening here. Don't get me wrong. Let me, let me be clear and say there's a lot going on in Acts chapter 2 that we do as, as followers of Jesus today want to uh, emulate and we want to learn from and grow from. Uh, but we also want to make sure to pay attention to, to this passage as it's intended to see that it's not meant to be a blueprint for the perfect church in all times and in all places. For starters, uh, one of the things we see right away is that Acts 2 is never uh, introduced as an instruction manual. Uh, it isn't inviting us to marvel uh, at, at, at what these early Christians are doing. There's never, you'll notice if you look carefully, there's, there's never a, a command statement. Therefore, you should do this. Uh, as we continue throughout the book of Acts uh, and other church communities are planted, uh, they bear similarities to this church, but there's never a moment where Paul or Peter uh, invite other communities to do exactly what this group has done here uh, in Jerusalem. It's not being presented to us uh, as the model uh, that, that is to be um, copied in every way. So if Acts chapter 2 is, is trying to teach us something important, but it isn't asking us to copy this imaginary idea of the perfect church, then the question is, what is going on here? Right? What, if, it, if, if it's not for us to just copy and paste, then, then what do we encounter in Acts chapter 2? What we see in, in these words, especially if we look closely at, at, at the very last verse that we read today where, where the Lord was adding to their numbers daily, is what we see is that Acts 2 is, is meant to be understood as a, a celebration, a witness to the power of God's creative spirit, building a new community, a new creation uh, amongst these people. That this is a celebration of what God is able to do, of what God is desiring to do with God's people and what God is capable of uh, bringing together this previously completely disconnected and an unaffiliated group of people uh, into this new community. This is all about God's incredible power and determination uh, to bring the body of Christ together. These people in Acts 2, their lives have been completely turned upside down. They've responded to the good news of God's love with joy and with worship. And because of the power of the Holy Spirit uniting them, it's because of that that they desire to, to share their possessions, to make sure that everyone uh, around the table has a place to be, that, uh, that everyone is welcomed this is what makes them um, capable of being that kind of church. It's not uh, their ingenuity or their creativity. Uh, this is a moment to stand in awe of the power of God uh, at work in the church there in Acts chapter 2. That's what we see. This whole moment is about God and God's work. God's desire to bring people together in equality and humility and mutuality. And so that's the good news. Now my dog is popping into the picture. You want to say hi, Izzy? Thank you for joining us. God is also providing us with pets to make our lives more chaotic and joy-filled as well. Uh, I'm glad that you all got to see Izzy this morning. So God is drawing together uh, the community in this unified body. God is shaking up the community in a way uh, that is previously unseen, right, with love uh, and equality. 
this new community is, is now loving people in a way that, that actually doesn't compute with the community around them. They're inviting people uh, to break bread around the table who are rich and poor uh, without expectation of being repaid. And this is making the Roman community around them scratch their heads and say, this is not what we're used to. Something, something new is happening here. God is creating a new way of life. And this new way of life, remember I mentioned a few minutes ago that there are things that we want to pay attention to and emulate here. This new way of life is brought about by God through a series of new habits and practices in this early community. Right, I've heard um, during this quarantine time a lot of people say, either online or, or in person, um, you know, this is going to change our way of life. Uh, lots of things that we do on a daily basis are going to change. And I think to myself, that's possible. Uh, certainly, some things structurally are going to change. Uh, but then I saw this joke online as well that, that, uh, that resonated with me. And it said, never underestimate the human ability uh, to, after this is all done, to have learned nothing and changed nothing. Uh, and, and what they were getting at there, of course, is this idea that change and transformation takes intentionality, right? We can make it through this whole pandemic moment and perhaps change very little, try to get right back to things the way they were. Uh, but through a series of uh, intentional habits and considering uh, the ways that God is present, uh, that's how God uh, begins to transform our lives and change the ways that we worship together. Now, as we consider, again, what this passage might mean for us today, how we might uh, consider that new way of life, these, these new uh, habits and practices, this new way of living that, that God might be inviting us into, I want us to go back to uh, that perfect church idea. When we first read this passage uh, in, in our Bible study this past Wednesday, uh, somebody shared, and I thought this was really helpful, um, when we first hear these words about this church in Acts 2, sharing everything they have, selling their possessions, spending time together in the, chap in the temple and around the table, um, sometimes our response can be, that sounds a little too perfect, right? Maybe just a little overly idealistic. Oftentimes when we, when we read chapter 2 of Acts, we can kind of um, dismiss this early church community and say things like, that sounds nice, but it wouldn't work today. I'm sure it worked then for them, but today that just, that's impractical, right? If we saw a group that did all of these things, we might think to ourselves, um, that's, that's, a, that's an odd bunch of people, right? So I want us to hold on uh, to those ideas, to those responses. It makes sense that we might have that initial reaction because this does seem a little too perfect. But remember, and this is key, that this church isn't perfect because of their creativity or their efforts. This church actually isn't perfect, but it is noteworthy because of God's work within it. Right? So the question for us really isn't how do we build the perfect church? The question for us today is, what are the things that God wants to do in our lives and in our communities, in our church, that we might think sound a little too good to be true, right? That's too big for us to imagine. I mean, it, it sounds great, but I don't know if it's practical. I've spoken with some of you all this past week, uh, and you've told me about learning about how much we have in common with our neighbors, because as you encounter them on the sidewalk, uh, you know right away we're, we're all in this together. Others have told me that you're starting to open your eyes to the reality that, uh, that God is present in, in unexpected places, right? Like we talked about earlier, around the kitchen table, uh, not just in the sanctuary. In this moment, we are learning important things about uh, God's presence in our lives and about the kind of uh, people that God is calling us to be, right? We're, we're, we're learning amazing things about people in our neighborhood who are checking up on their neighbor and delivering groceries. Uh, these are just some of the things that God wants to do uh, um, amongst the people of God, amongst the church. God can bring together people from all different backgrounds. 
God can inspire us to join with our neighbors in ways uh, that makes the community around us marvel at our generosity and, and, and our togetherness and our, our community. Uh, God wants to invite us uh, to prayer and to worship and to eating dinner together around the table. All of these things, uh, again, not exactly like Acts 2, but all of these things are possible. None of them are too lofty or too idealistic for God because that's who God is. And the good news for us in this text the good news that surrounds us in love, the good news that draws us forward uh, into this moment of chaos and confusion is the assurance that, that God continues to be near, that God is doing exactly what's going on in Acts 2 in our lives, in our community, in our church today, inviting us uh, to pay attention, to join our lives together uh, into that creative act. And so that's what I want to invite us into in this coming week, is to pay attention uh, to the ways that God is at work all around us, uh, to the, the incredible things that we might think are too big, too impractical, uh, that God is saying, no, that's exactly what, what, what I'm doing. And so let's pay attention and let's uh, have our prayer together be that we might join in that work. Let's pray. Loving God, we do give you all thanks and praise for the ways that you uh, are bigger than our imaginations, are stronger uh, than, uh, than anything we can, can possibly do, and that you show up in our lives each and every day. We give you thanks and praise for this church community in Acts chapter 2 and the ways that they uh, are a picture of what your presence and your faithfulness looks like. Lord, we desire that to be the case in our lives and in our church. Be with us now as we, uh, as we seek to follow you. It's in your name that we pray together. Amen. Everyone, at this point in the service, we get to continue worshiping God by bringing our, our response to God's word, our offerings, our prayers, uh, knowing that God meets us in this place as well. And so uh, before we pass the virtual offering plate here, I just want to say two quick things. Uh, the first is, uh, as you're continuing to fulfill your pledges and, and give your, your, the offering that you would normally put in the offering plate, we just want to say we're so thankful uh, that for your support for Redmond Presbyterian Church and the ministry that we are being empowered to do uh, in our community and, and in the lives of, of you all of, in our congregation. Uh, continue sending in those checks in the mail. That's uh, easiest for us to process, but uh, you can also, I'm pointing to the top of our website, you can also click uh, on the Give Now button and, and give online if that's easier for you as well. Um, but again, we, we appreciate your support during this time. And then the second word that I want to mention is uh, just as if the offering plate was coming by and you would have a, a prayer request card to drop in it, uh, if you would like to share with us uh, your prayers, your joys, your concerns, uh, your needs, whether those needs are physical or emotional or financial, uh, please send those in. You can email myself at austin at redmondpres.org or any one of your uh, deacons. We will keep those requests and, and concerns confidential unless uh, you tell us otherwise. Um, but we would love to know how we can continue supporting one another and our church and our community in this time. So let's take all of that, uh, all of who we are, our gifts, our talents, our resources, our energy, uh, all uh, as a gift now to God and bring our prayers uh, to God in this time as well. Please join me in prayer and then we'll join our voices together uh, in the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray. Loving God, we ask that you'd hear our prayers as we pray with your people whose tears continue to flow this day. We pray for those who are suffering from illness or from injustice. We pray for your people who are consumed by conflict in fear of oppression or longing for justice. Lord, we pray especially for those whose needs are closest to our lives today, for the healthcare workers in our communities who each and every day uh, endure dangerous and, uh, and, and scary circumstances, Lord, 
uh, to care for so many who, who we know and we love and, and others in our community uh, who we may not know but are, are in need of, of support as well. We thank you for nurses and doctors and hospital administrators and, and workers and everyone uh, who is involved in that work. We pray that you'd keep them healthy and safe, uh, care for their hearts and their minds in this time as well. We pray for those who uh, drive trucks and operate grocery stores, those who deliver packages to our homes. Uh, Lord, for everyone uh, in this time who um, is in danger, who is in uh, concerned for their health on a daily basis, Lord, we, we ask for uh, your, your presence and your nearness and your protection in those times as well. We pray for teachers and school administrators, for students and for parents, all entering into this uh, new way of learning and teaching. Uh, Lord, we pray for patience and grace. We pray for uh, creativity and energy and, and excitement, uh, even in the midst of this difficult time. We pray for those who are worried about finances, who are worried about the future of what may come. Lord, we pray for our country and each one of us uh, in this time. Restore us. Shine your face on us, O oh Lord. You are the one who is the redeemer of all things. And we pray for the church that you have gathered. You call us out of the world's ways and you plant us deep in the life of Christ. And we celebrate that the gospel has reached far and wide through faithful ministry and even in despite of human unfaithfulness. We pray for the church in a time of upheaval and change when it seems like our life is uprooted and our institutions are in question. Return to us, O oh Lord, your love and your presence. Plant us again in Christ. Make us your very own. Restore us. And shine your face on us, O oh Lord. We pray all of these things in your holy name, praying the prayer that you taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join me in our closing song. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you Every hour I need you My one defense My righteousness Oh God, how I need you Where sin runs deep Your grace is more where grace is found is where you are, and where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. Yes, where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. Lord, I need you, oh, I need you, every hour I need you, my one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. So teach my song to 
rise to you when temptation comes my way and when I cannot stand I'll fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay and when I cannot stand I'll fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay as we go out from this place, I would love to invite you to our time of uh, our virtual coffee hour, which happens right after this service on Zoom. The link is in your email. You can also find it on our church website. We'd love to see your face and hear how you're doing uh, and just be together. Um, Also, we will continue joining together for our Wednesday Bible study. You're welcome to join us for that. Uh, All are welcome and uh, lots of other ways, even in this time of, of, of separation and isolation. Uh, Lots of ways for us to continue gathering and and being the church together. Um, But as we go now, as we end our service of worship, but we continue our lives of worship, uh, go now with this blessing. To God, who through the power at work within us is able to do far more than we can ever ask or even imagine. To that God be all glory and honor in the church and in our lives and in the world now and forever. And all of God's people said, Amen. God bless.